Welcome to a new sermon series, man. Praise God, called a uh, church life, surface life, and we are absolutely excited about it. And the reason why it is called church life, circus life, is because we understand, man, that that when you begin to talk about church life, man, there are some people who indeed know, and they are going to live the church life as their lifestyle. They're going to be that church. They're going to serve the church. They're going to go all out for the church. And I'm not talking about the building. I'm talking about the people, amen. I'm talking about what it is that Christ Jesus is calling us and wants us to do. But then there are other people who will treat it like it's a circus, like indeed it is the greatest show on earth, and it's just simply entertainment. And I will sit in my pew and watch all the clowns and, and everything else do everything that they do, and oh man, this is just going to be so much fun. So today what we're going to do is, man, we're going to show you indeed how it is that we roll here at Source Church. And then you can choose if you want to roll with us or if you want to bounce to another church that will entertain you. Because we're not focused on entertaining. Right. Indeed, what we are focused on, praise God, is soul winning. Amen. 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 I have a chart that I want to throw up here real quick. If you just hit them likes for me for a second. I'm going to ask you guys, man, to cover, to cover your right eye. Okay? Hallelujah. Can you guys read the third the third uh, line right here? Awesome. Now switch. Switch eyes. Awesome. Turn on the lights. Do you guys know what that spells? I can see. Absolutely nothing. But <laughs> What I wanted to do, man, before we got going, man, is I wanted to check y'all's vision. Nice. Because that's extremely important to check your guys' vision. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and that's exactly what it is that we're going to be able to do today, is, is we are going to check our vision. So your vision needs to be checked every once in a while, amen, to make sure your eyes are doing good for you. And I believe that the church's vision, amen, people should want to be checking to see what the church's vision is, so that indeed you guys can see where it is that we are going. You know, I don't know about you guys, man, but, but one thing that, 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 that I have a problem with, man, is, is, is perhaps you're like me and you probably need glasses. That sometimes you can't see things, but you're almost too prideful to admit it. You know what I'm saying? Now, I'm getting a little bit less prideful because there's some really cool looking glasses out there, so I just might have to get some so I can look even cooler. But, I'm not but indeed, I probably need glasses at times, man, but I, but I don't get them. And, and my biggest thing is, man, is, is, is I almost take it as a competition when I go into the doctor. It's a competition for me to see if I could read what it is that he wants me to read. And, and if you're like me, man, I, see, I believe that if the doctor could get you to where you can't read the lines, I almost think like he's getting a sick amusement off of it. You know, like, like my mind is twisted. I almost begin to think that the doc thinks he's got one up on me now. You know what I mean? Like he's trying to punk me or something. So what I begin to do, I can't give the doc any points. So what I begin to do, if you're like me, is I begin to memorize the chart. Because I'm not going to lose. You know what I mean? So what I will begin to do, man, is I will begin to memorize the chart. So when the doc calls me up there, boom, I know it right on top of my head. Doc, but if I turn around if you want me to, I will amaze you how I can read it in the back of my head. You know what I'm saying? Does it help me with my vision? Absolutely not. But does it give me the victory? Every single time. Hello. Don't judge me. Pray for me. But indeed, it's true. So what better way, man, to kick off this new sermon series, indeed, than to, to start it off with talking about our vision. Five years ago, on June 27th, man, thank you, Jesus, we actually planted the church. We turned five years this year. Man. What's even more powerful than that is we planted the church in the south. Now, that might not be big to some people, but if you study church plants, the south is the hardest place to plant churches. Why is that? Because Southern folk always think we got everything together. Right. Hello. <laughs> Southern folk, men are stuck in tradition. That's good. Yeah. Hello. Mm -hmm. In the South, and everywhere else, but especially in the South, there is a strong demonic force oh, yeah. in and out of the church, yeah. and its ringleader is that called religion. Amen. Amen. Yeah. You can tell it Hello. Got about six people who's with me. The other six are going, oh my gosh, he just said religion's a demon. And I'll say it again. Religion is a demonic force. Amen. Yeah. People stay in churches, why? Simply because they stay in churches that they're starving to death and that they're not being right. fed, why? Because their great, great, great granddaddy went to that church, right. amen. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. 
I hear it all the time. Pastor, we would love to come to your church, or we would love to go check out this other church. But, you know, my, my great, 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 great granddaddy founded that church. And I said, and your great, 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 great granddaddy's dead. And as long as you stay in that church, homie, so are you. Wow. So, indeed, you've got to go places where it is that you're going to be fed. I believe, man, that you should get your vision checked before you go buy a pair of glasses. So, too, you should get your vision checked before you decide to get plugged in. You should get the church's vision checked before you decide to go all out or get plugged That's in right. to that church. Right. Amen? Amen? Because I think picking a church is extremely important. He tells us in Proverbs 29, 18, out of the voice, it says, uh, where there is no vision from God, the people run wild. Right. Where there is no vision from God, the people indeed will run <laughs> wild. Amen. First, let me ask you guys this, man. Who in here has heard before in the past our church's vision? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, praise God. Mm -hmm. And you guys say, man, yeah, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's the law. Praise God. There was about six hands that went up. So at the church, it might be the six of us, but we're going to build back up in the mighty name of Jesus. I promise you that. But praise God, man. And I make that joke because oftentimes what happens, a lot of times when, when pastors get, begin to get churches' visions, man, two things are going to happen. You're either going to get people, man, who get excited, who want to get on board, who will be sold out for Christ Jesus, and they will, be, they will be sold out for the church. Or the other thing that's going to happen is they are going to begin to hate your vision. They're going to begin to leave the church. They're going to begin to claim that you're a cult. Start all types of rumors about you and the church. No, I'm not bitter. <laughs> it does seem to be what it is. That takes place. Amen. You're right. But when those people leave, what we often do pray is that they will also take the church or the pew sitters with them. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because pew sitters do absolutely nothing for any church right. except take up space. Yeah. Yeah. And we don't want people just to take up space. We want people who are going to sit in them seats to get here to get filled up, but then to go back out Amen. on the mission field and go all out for Christ Jesus, yeah. for the church, and indeed for the community. Amen. Is there anybody in here who loves Jesus? Amen. Amen. Is there anybody in here who loves your church? Yeah. Anybody in here who loves your church family? Yeah. Some people are like, I love them, I just don't like all of them. <laughs> and praise God, that's why I said that y'all love your church family. You can ask if you like them. You know, sometimes a church family could be like your cousin and just gets underneath your skin. And every time you see them, like, hey, what's going on? I love you. <laughs> Don't turn your back on me. <laughs> what? Well, I didn't say nothing, but you know, that's, unfortunately, that's how sometimes the church folk is. But indeed, man, praise God. I love it that people love are madly in love with Jesus. Yeah. I love it that people love this church. Yeah. I love it that, that this church is like a family. Amen. Yeah. And praise God for it. Now, sometimes there comes discipline within the family, and we right. got to discipline our church right. family as well. Amen. Amen. And if you can't take, if you can't separate the two, then indeed this church will not be for you because we are about correcting, rebuking, yes, and encouraging. Yes, in the mighty name of Jesus, yes. because that's what the word Amen. says. Yes. So indeed, that is indeed what it is that we are going to do. And I believe that the reason why I wanted to ask you if you love the if you love Jesus, love the church, love your family, because I believe that when you love something or you love someone, then indeed you will go all out for them. Amen. That's right. You will go all out for what it is that you love. You guys are uh, anybody in here a soccer fan watching the World Cup? Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Bob. Like four hands. World Cup is cool, man. The soccer's all right. Y'all check it out. But uh, check it out. But what's crazy, man, is these fans, we think like football people are crazy. Football fans, and I, football's my favorite hey, sport. Hey, we But hey, I love but, <laughs> but man, these people, <laughs> these people are absolutely crazy, man. You know what I'm saying? They would jump off of like the thorough balcony, man, onto the field and land on their feet and be like, oh! They go all out, but if we can get people to go all out for Christ Jesus like that, can you imagine who would begin to have it if people would treat Jesus like they treat the World Cup or the Super Bowl Amen. or the yeah. World yeah. Series, whatever it's called. I don't dig baseball that much, but you know, if we begin to treat it, Amen. If we begin to treat Jesus like that, Amen. imagine what That's would take good. place. Good. We're looking for real soldiers who are going to go all out. Real soldiers who will go all out for Christ, for church, for the community. If you're looking to enlist here at Source Church, then indeed, we want you to know what it is that you should expect from your church. 
We want you to know what it is that we expect from you, and we want you to understand what it is that our goal is. See, we're not looking for couch potato. Indeed, that's that other church. Those couch potato Christians, man, that's for them other churches, man. Indeed, we're looking for people who are going to be sold out soldiers in the trenches, hello, Amen. type of soldiers. Yeah. See, I believe churches are like restaurants. Okay. They all serve, the, it's, it's all serving food, but indeed, they serve up different styles, different right. types, amen. Right. But it's all the same thing, it's food. Amen. But I'm going to tell you this much, man, you, we will not, we are not a buffet, so we will, you will not get served your hey, way. That's right. But there's one way, and it's his oh, way, amen. Yeah. Yeah. Our way will always lead us to hell's yeah, kitchen. Come on, son, buddy. <laughs> You're right. welcome, Gordon Ramsay. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> But indeed, man, so it's not gonna be it's not gonna be our way, but indeed it will be Christ Jesus' way. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. So who are we? First I want to say who we are not. We are not a cult, despite popular belief. <laughs> We're not a satanic church, despite popular belief. Hello. <laughs> Some people around us think we're a satanic church. But indeed, we are not, praise God. We are also not a museum for saints. That's right. Come on. We are also not religious. Right. See, religion is going to begin to tell you that you cannot come in if you're a screw-up. Right. We tell you that you're in a room full of screw-ups. Right. Hello. That have been saved by grace. Hello. And we praise God that we are saved by grace. Yes. Religion will begin to tell you, man, that if you're divorced, you cannot serve. If your marriage is failing, please keep it on a hush-hush. Just put a smile on your face and act like everything is okay. After all, you're in church. If you're on drugs and you're on a highway to hell, if you're backsliding, then indeed you're no good for nothing. If you're having premarital sex, then you're disgusting and a hypocrite. If you're a teenager who's pregnant, then she must be a whore and her parents have failed her tremendously. Don't come to church with all those issues, please. First get right, and then come to church. The problem with that, indeed, is that we can't get right, That's right. first. That's right. We need Christ to get us right. Hello. Why? Because we are not perfect people. What we believe here is there was only one perfect person, and they crucified him. They killed him. He willingly and freely died for the non-perfect people like you and me. Amen. That is indeed what we believe. So who are we first? We are followers of Christ Jesus, yeah. yes. not just Christians. That's right. The word Christian has been tainted, mm -hmm. but indeed we are followers of Christ Jesus. Yeah. Not because we have to be, not because we're forced That's to be, right. but indeed because we want to be, because we are madly in love with this man named Woo! Jesus, Amen. and we are sold out for him. Yes. We are a bunch of sinners who were hopeless and helpless until we met Jesus, and now we are hopeful because indeed he has helped us. Amen. We believe that Jesus is the Son of God, God himself, the great I am, as that song just said, Amen. thank you my Lord, who was indeed sent down from heaven through the womb of a teenage girl named Mary, who died for our sins and indeed on the cross, put in a tomb, three days later he rose again, indeed to bring us into right standings with God Almighty. Thank you Jesus. And now he is, sits on the right hand of God, but that's not all. We also believe that after 40 days when he was going back up into heaven, he explained to us that he was going to leave us, but indeed that we were going to have a Holy Ghost that was going to come down to help us, is what he's called a comforter. Amen. And that's exactly what it is. And we believe that when you ask Jesus to be your Savior, repent of your sins, then indeed you can have that Holy Ghost dwelling inside of you. And you will, as Apostle Paul says, be saved when you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart. Yes. Believing me and not making an acknowledgement of Jesus, yes. but making Jesus your everything. Amen. 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 And you acknowledge you are nothing without yeah, Christ yeah, Jesus. Yeah, yeah. And you make him Lord and Savior of your life. We also believe that he will and we that he does transform lives all day every day yeah. in the mighty name of Jesus. Yeah. He will manifest himself on you, in you, and through you in powerful ways. We believe in the fire, the power, the baptism, and the anointing yeah. of the Holy Ghost. We also believe the Holy Ghost is not an it, but indeed the Holy Ghost is a he. Hello. That's what scripture says. So that indeed is what it is that we believe. Yeah. So who are we? We are, the, we are Jesus' hands. 
We are Jesus' feet. Amen. We are the mouthpiece of Jesus, the mouthpiece of Jesus, and we will get out there on those streets and be all of those Sorry. things because that's what Christ Jesus has called us to be. Amen. We believe that wherever we go, whether it's in the light or whether it's in the dark, that we are to represent that of Christ Jesus. And just like Jesus, church. Indeed, we will love and receive the sick, the lame, the broken, the outcast, the lonely, and the hurting people. And we will embrace them and love them like never before. We will love those who don't love themselves. Thank you, Jesus. We will love those who have been molested and we will even love the molester because Jesus Christ does the same. Can I get an amen? amen. We will reach out to pimps, johns, and prostitutes with a judge-free Christ type of love. Can I get an amen? amen? We will help the drug dealer and the drug addict get the help that they both need. Hallelujah. Yeah. We will help the abuser and the abused. We will not be a picketing type of church or a picketing type of Christians. Indeed, we will be the loving ones that are so rare to find these days, unfortunately. The only wood we will carry upon our back will be the wood of the cross in Jesus' name. The only signs that we will fly will be signs to let you know that Jesus died for you and indeed he loves you. That will be the signs that we will fly. Not that Christ hates you or not that you're going to burn and go to hell. Because through Christ Jesus, we want you to know that there is indeed hope. You already know if you're a sinner. Can I get up with this? You need to know indeed that there is hope and praise God. We will stand beside and we will fight with the law enforcement, praise God, to fight against the crime and the evil in our community. But at the same time, we will do it while we are still loving and reaching out to the criminal. Because indeed, that's what Jesus did. We are here to love on and to help teachers, students, parents of all types of different walks of life. Because that's what Jesus did. Like my wife, he just put on Facebook just the other day. She put hypocrites, gossipers, slanderers, backstabbers, liars, greedy, adulterers, hateful, mean, or nice. We could keep going, but basically if you have breath in your lungs or uh, and are or have been in one of these categories, come be our family. Amen. Hello. Because indeed, that's what we're about. Yeah. Why are we about that? Because we believe what Scripture says. And Scripture lets us know in Romans 3, 23 and 24. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, being, uh, being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Hallelujah. Jesus. So whether happy or sad or mad or glad, negative or joyful, believer or not, indeed, you are welcome here. Amen. Because we know that the blood of Jesus will cover your sins. We know that the Holy Ghost will begin to change your life. Yes, sir. If we could just get you to hear the word. Because yeah. faith comes by hearing. Amen. And hearing the word. Hallelujah. Yeah. And we know that when we introduce you to Jesus and you have that face-to-face -face encounter with not the religious Jesus, but the biblical Jesus, Amen. the real Jesus, then indeed we know your life will truly be changed. We are a group of believers that believe that we are the church and not the building that we worship in. This is simply a structure that we come here to gather together. But this is not the church. This is the church. And indeed, that's what we believe. We believe being Christians. We believe being the church is not just a Sunday, Wednesday thing. But indeed, it's a Romans 12, 1 and 2 type of living sacrifice 24, 7 Thing. That's what we believe. Amen. We believe Source Church will be a church uh, of such influence, so large in size that the Outer Banks, Dare County, the nation cannot nor will not be able to ignore what God is doing in it, to Amen. it, through it, or Amen. for it. Amen. Amen. And if and when we have a chance to step into the White House, Amen. It won't be all of getting praise, but indeed it will be the name of Jesus that will be getting praise. Hello. I'm just going to throw that out there right now in the mighty name of Jesus. We'll be a church, man, that, that we, this is what we see in the mighty name of Jesus. We'll be a church of multiple campuses because we know what it is that God has told us to do and indeed what he has told us that we will do, praise God. Yeah. We'll be a church who is Christ in motion and who stays Christ in motion because that's all we know, amen. Yeah. Because he is all we need to know in the mighty name yeah. of Jesus. Yeah. A church, man, that is a breath of fresh air to heaven and sheer terror to hell, amen. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. A church that touches heaven to to move down on earth's behalf because 
we worship our Savior. Not because we're perfect, because we're not. We all fall short of the glory. Yeah. But because we serve and we love and we worship this man named Jesus yeah. who saved our lives. Praise God. Hallelujah. A church that worship won't just be the songs that we sing, but indeed it will be the lyrics that we live. As it will be the, the, the very essence of our soul. That's, That's what Source yeah. Church That's is all good. about. We are and we will continue to be a church with the altars that will be open full of people who are broke, busted, and disgusted. Not getting condemned, not getting slapped down, but getting picked up and getting loved on in the mighty name of Jesus. We are a church where there is no line drawn between the sinner and the saint, the gay or the straight, as if to say, you're welcome, but you're not. Amen. No, if you are a people who are breathing, then indeed you are welcome, because we want Christ Jesus to change your life. Amen. That's what we are a church of. If you are a people, then we love you, because Jesus came because he loved people. Amen. We will continue to be a church. Well, people, praise God, will give their life to Christ because they want to be something much bigger than themselves Amen. and they want something much better than what the world yes. is offering Amen. them. And you can find it and his name is Jesus. Amen. And we praise God for that. We will stay at church where the sick are healed and where cancer is defeated and lungs and kidneys are healed and eyesights begin to be restored and ears begin to get popped open and the mute, the mute begin to speak, the lame begin to indeed walk, the dead raised and the supernatural takes place. Why? All because the gospel is preached, Amen. praise God. And that is what we believe here at Source Church. We are a church, praise God, that is blessed to be allowed by the Holy Ghost to set the oppressed free, the depressed free, the possessed free, all in the mighty name of yes. Jesus. It has nothing to do with us, but has everything to do with right. He who is in us. Can I get an amen? Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Source Church is and will always be filled and led by the Ghost. Nope, not Casper, but indeed the Holy Ghost. Hello. That's the only one we listen to. It's the only one we believe in. Hello. Thank you, Jesus. And that is what our church will stand for. We are a church, praise God, that will stand against the evil and the gates of hell shall not prevail because this is his church, Amen. not my church. Hello. So praise God for that. We are a church, man, who has soldiers who will gladly enlist into his army and to fight in his name. And we will be a demon-stomping, devil-slaying type of church yeah. because we are enlisted in the army of Christ Jesus. We are unified, sanctified, justified, praise God. And one day soon we will be glorified when our Father calls us into those heavenly gates, praise God. We are a church, praise, praise the Lord, who fights in the Spirit, prays in the Spirit, and taps into the fruits and the gifts of the Spirit yeah. because our Savior has told us Amen. that is what indeed we need to do. Amen. We will be a church who preaches a message, teaches a message so clear that people of all ages different backgrounds can and will understand it so they can and will give their life to Christ so they can and will be a world changer do you want to be a part of our family praise Amen. God we will continue to be a church that will be a safe house for your hurting friends for your broken friends and for your lost friends we will be an orphanage for your unloved friends and for your unwanted friends a rehab for your addicted friends a hospital for your dying sinful friends your, your sick in sin friends and your dead in sin friends Friends, we are a hospital for them. Amen. Again, we're not a museum, praise God. We are a hands-on, getting dirty because life is dirty type yeah. of church. Amen. And that's what we will continue to be. We are a church, praise my Lord, man, where the people are not afraid or ashamed to reach out to the lepers like Jesus did, touch the sick like Jesus did, and embrace the outcast Amen. just like Jesus did. Yeah. We will stay true to our work roots of being a church that is so madly in love with Jesus and wants to simply love Jesus' people. Yeah. I love, man, that church I got saved under that life when I've shared this story before, but this fella came, and, and, and I bring this up because I had somebody recently say to me, uh, I want to sit down and talk to you and, and uh, talk to you about theology to see if I could come to your church. You don't have to sit down and talk to me. Come in and see what the Lord is doing in you. But I say that to say this. Uh, 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 my pastor friend of mine, uh, Jeff Kapuska, <coughs> of, of Life Point, had a man come up to him and say, uh, I've been to, I think it was like 240 churches in Wilmington. And I think he said, I've been to 239. It was the last church that I have to come to. 
And he says, if you can answer me these questions, then indeed I'm going to come to your church. Oh, man, that's awesome. It's going to be an honor and privilege for me to have you come to my church if I can answer these questions. Yes, yeah. give them to me. <laughs> and um, so the man begins to ask him these questions. And he told me, he said, Frank, man, they were deep theological, crazy questions. I didn't make a hill of beans about salvation. Hello. Hello. And he said that when, he, when the man asked him these questions, he told him, he said, you know what, my man? He said, when I could master the first two commandments. Well, he said, what are the first two commandments? <laughs> the two greatest commandments. And the man says, you know, love the Lord your God with everything, boom, boom, boom. And he said, and love your neighbor as yourself. And Pastor Judd Kapuska said, man, that's right. And he said, and I'll tell you what. When I could master those two things. When I can master every single day of every single second in that day, yeah. making sure my God is first, and then loving my neighbor as I love myself, oh. I'll worry about your silly little questions. <laughs> See, what we got to concentrate on is not who's the smartest. Yeah. What we got to concentrate on is man who's truly sold out for Christ. Yeah. We got to concentrate on those who are not. So indeed, we know exactly where it is that we need to go. Amen. Praise God. We will love Christ and we will love people. We will continue to be a church that is moved with compassion when we see injustice and a need. Amen. We are and we will continue to be a church that will feed the hungry, clothe the naked, visit those in prison. Praise God. Because that is what it is that we are called to do. We will be a church with, with a love so real that people from all walks of life, will be drawn in to a love so real, to a love so powerful that they won't only feel it, amen, but they will also begin to taste it. Yeah. Because that is indeed what we believe takes place. Here. Yeah. And thank you, Jesus. We are a church who believe, who, who believe in small groups. We believe in that small groups are powerful, friendly. Bonds begin to take place. Chains begin to break off. You can't raise your hand and ask questions in church because we got to, to teach and preach. But indeed, in small groups, you can begin to break down every little detail. It's in small groups that you see the most transformation in people's yeah. lives. It's in small groups where hope is birthed. It's yeah. in small groups where everlasting joy is birthed. It's in small groups where you find acceptance. No, we're not clickish. It's just some people actually get in and get sold in. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And that is what it's about. Praise God. Amen. We love small groups. Yes. And you can find amazing things in small groups. You dig into life's problems through the mighty word of God in yeah. small groups. Yeah. Yeah. We are a church who, are, who believes in all about missions. Praise God. Praise whether God. it's missions in country, whether it's missions in state, or if it's missions out of country. Yes. Praise God. We will send people to Costa Rica yes. to do water or skateboard par uh, skate parks uh, uh, church. We will send people to Costa Rica for sex trafficking. We will send people to Africa to put water in. We will send people to Haiti man to begin to minister and, 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 and to do things for orphanages and, yeah. and to come against the uh, uh, the witchcraft and the yeah. voodoo. We will send people where it is that our Savior tells us to send Praise people. We will send people down to Rodanthe or wherever it may be when hurricanes come or out west when tornado or in Midwest when tornadoes come. Whatever it is yeah. that we need to do, we will send people because we believe in that. Amen. That's the type of church we are. Praise God. Praise God. We are and we will always be that church that is kingdom-minded, doing kingdom business, praise God, at no matter what the cost. Because Christ Jesus wasn't concerned about the cost. Amen. When indeed he gave us his life, we will, we will believe exactly like Apostle Paul tells us in Philippians 1.21, to live is Christ and to die is gain. Because to us, when to live is Christ and to die is gain, the enemy can't even begin to haunt you nor can he taunt you. Because to you, to live is Christ, and indeed to die is gain. So to God be the glory. It's a victory, victory, it's a win-win in the mighty name of Jesus. We are a church that, that will see real life, powerful, changing revival sweeping through this country, sweeping through this world, and it is going to begin to flood this place like a tsunami wave, and it's going to be absolutely awesome. So hang on tight, church because it's getting ready to take place. Praise it will be a love so real. It will be something so powerful. It will be the Holy Ghost moving like crazy. And I've said this before, that we will begin to see the Taliban, the L L L L ARs. We will begin to see Bloods and the Crips and the MS-13s. We 
magazines, putting down their hate, their bombs, their AKs, picking up their Bibles, their crosses, and picking up that called love. Praise Amen. God. We believe that our God is not powerful to do so because that's the God that it is that we serve. We believe that people are going to stop crying out voodoo and start crying out what must I do, praise God, to become saved. That's what we believe. We are a church, praise God, who will not forget that Jesus died for them, and yes, Christ Jesus loves them, Amen. so therefore, so will we. Amen. We will indeed love our enemies because Christ Jesus told us to do so. If this ain't the church for you, then hey, there's other churches out there, but if this is the church for you, then praise God, we would love to have you. We are, and we will continue to be a church that is committed to loving people, no matter the color, the sex, or the age of the person, no matter where they come from, or the sin, indeed, that they find themselves in. We are just simply going to love them, point them to Jesus, and know that he will indeed do the rest. Amen. We will disciple them, and we will teach them. But we know that it's Christ Jesus indeed who is going to change them, right. not us. Right. Right. We know it's Jesus who is going to save them, yeah. not us. Yeah. And we're not going to try because when we get in the way, that's just it. That's right. We get in the way. That's right. Amen. Right. We're going to step aside and we're going to let Jesus be Jesus. Yeah. We will be a churchman who loves those people of our faith. We will be a church who loves those people who hate our faith. And we will be a church who loves those people who have no faith. Again, and we will be a church committed to training up, empowering, and raising up a generation sold out to Christ, like Peter tells us in 2 Peter 2.9. He says that a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people. Yes. He has called us out of darkness, and he's called us into his marvelous light. Amen. We will be a church, praise God, that we will go out there to where the harvest is white, praise God, and we will begin to pick that harvest in the mighty name of Jesus because we believe that one day it's going to be over. Yes. And we want to bring as many with us to the kingdom of heaven Amen. as possible. Amen? Amen. Yeah. But in order to do so, church, we have to stay on the same mindset. We have to have the same goal. Amen. And that's let no man, no woman, no boy, no girl. That's not to let them perish. But indeed, it's to seek them out. So we can introduce them to he who can save them. And clean them out in the mighty name of Jesus. Yeah. A church where Christ is the head, the Holy Ghost is our guide, and our Father indeed is almighty. Amen. That's the type of church that we are. God. Because this is his church. Yeah. Yeah. This is our church. Because it's his church. Yeah. This is indeed Source Church. If you don't know, now you know. Amen. 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 You want to be a part of it. Yeah. Bottom line, I like that. is we are real life people with real life issues that have real life struggles and oftentimes find ourselves in real life troubles. Yeah. But we are a people who Love and serve a real life God. Amen. That causes us to put ourselves aside and to reach out to people, real life people, yeah. in their real life problems and show them a real life Savior. That's the type of people we are. Amen. Don't get it twisted. That's who we are. So you're either with us or you're against us. <laughs> But either way, we gonna move on in the mighty name. Yeah. To us, this is our mission, and indeed, it is not a mission impossible. Because I'm reminded in Scripture, and I believe everything Scripture says, that through Christ Jesus, all things are possible. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So it's not a mission impossible; it's a mission extremely possible. We are the church that preaches the same message as the early church, just we have different tactics. And to God be the glory. So now you've heard our mission. You've heard our statement. You've indeed heard our vision. Now you got two options. And praise God for those options. You can join us. You can get dirty with us in the mighty name of Jesus. Or you can simply get out of our way. Because we have a Savior to worship. We indeed have a message to preach. My worship team can come up. We have souls to reach and people to love, to love on. And we have lives to change, a mission to do, and a hospital to build. All in the mighty name of Jesus. That excites me. Hallelujah. So 
if that's you, and you want to be a part of that, God be glory. Welcome home, family. <laughs> But if it's not, understand you're not hurting our feelings. And we're not even going to judge you. We're going to love you. Amen. We're going to pray for you. But we will ask you to get out of that seat. So that we can use that seat for somebody else. Who's going to take this thing called Christ, Church, Series. So they can become a world changer. And not a couch potato Christian. Amen. That's right. Will you pray with me? Father God, we thank you. We praise you. We love you. We give you all the glory, Jesus. God, and we thank you that in your scriptures, Jesus, I'm reminded, God, that you were bold in telling people to follow you. Bold to the fact that when a man said he wanted to be your disciple, you said, follow me. And he said, well, first let me bury my dad. And you said, let the dead bury the dead. Either you're with me or get out of my way. But we're continuing on in what my Father has sent me to do. And Jesus, I thank you that you have granted us permission to be the same type of follower. And tell people that the dead bury the dead. Either you're coming with us or you're staying behind. But we're going to move on to do the mission that our daddy has sent us to do. I pray right now in the sound of my voice that each soul, each spirit, each, each body that is in here, you're made up of three. I pray indeed that you will want to be connected first to Christ Jesus. Second to the church, to this community. I pray man, that you will want to make this church your family. But if not, then please, Make another church in front. Get plugged in. But check your vision before you do it. Because if their vision is not lining up with the Word of God, find someone else. I could have rest assured that our vision lines up with the Word of God. We have a mission to do. We will stop at nothing to do. We know, praise God, that we need an army to help us. But we're also not fooled. We see what Gideon did the three times. So we're not going to have people just to tag along who are going to do nothing. We want the in the trenches type of soldiers. Because that's the type of church that we are. We go to the trenches. We go to the gutters. And we pull out the broke, busted, and disgusted. And I need them to be pulled out by people who are going to love them and not condemn them. And if you're here today and you've been condemned for things of your life, then I want to apologize to you on the behalf of whoever did it. And let you know, listen, we love you here. But most importantly, Jesus loves you. He'll never condemn you. He came to save you. He came to give you salvation. And you can have it right now. Does anybody in here who don't know Jesus, who don't know salvation? That would be like going into a war with no gun and no armor. You gotta get equipped, you gotta get situated first. So if that's you, man, we're going to open up our hearts and we're gonna ask Jesus to be our Savior. Like we just said, we believe He's the Son of God. We believe He came down from heaven to die for our sins upon the cross. Not His sins, for He was sinless, but our sins. He who knew no sin became our sin. Rose three days later. He didn't just die for us, as oftentimes when we want to leave it, but He rose for us. Now he's our Savior if we ask him to be. Confess with our mouth, believe in our heart, making him your treasure. If that's you right now, open up your heart and we're all going to repeat this prayer. Say, Father God, Father God in, the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I'm a sinner, I'm a sinner and, I and I need a Savior. There's only one. There's only one. His, name His name is Jesus. So Lord, so Lord forgive, me. forgive me. Restore me. Restore me. Renew, me. Renew me. Refresh me. I'm all, I'm all yours, and you're all mine. You're all mine. And all God's kids said, Amen. Amen. Amen.
And amen. And amen. Will you stand to your feet? Praise God. As we enter back into worship.